Alrighty, I'm going to try to give a, an explanation on how a square beller works. This hooks to the tractor. This is your PTO. That's 540. This tongue here, if it's over in this position, swung all the way over like... Right here with the pin in it, that's the transport position. You swing it all the way out, it kicks that part of the beller out so you can actually bell hay with it. There's your pickup. That crank right there lets it down. It's got a bunch of teeth on it that uh, just picks the hay up out of a windrow, which feeds it to the auger. Auger feeds it to the stuffer fork. And this the stuffer fork and the plunger, which is right here hooked to this. I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can get the light to come on and be able to show it better. Alright, let's see if I can get this down in here and maybe show it. This little weight on the side here is what keeps momentum going constantly. And then when this plunger goes, it takes so much force forming a square bell that, that uh, the weight of this wheel right here keeps, keeps constant momentum, I guess you could say, or inertia on it. And it's timed perfectly that whenever this it spins this way, it goes down and pulls the plunger back. Then the stuffer forks goes down and shoves more hay into the bell chamber. And as soon as the bell forks are out of the way, then the plunger again will go. And it's doing this multiple strokes a second. Here, I think about 14 cranks to start out with every year that I crank it down. 12 or 14. And that puts tension on this so your bells are tighter and the strings aren't loose. And you adjust that as needed. Yeah, that's my patient cow. All right, but hold on. Your twine box is right there. You get four balls of twine that it holds. You tie the the one on the very right to the second one, and then I think the third one to the first one. You run them down here. And up through the needles, there's two of them because there's two strings on each bell. There's one needle, the other one's right. Well, you can see it, they're right side by side. Your eye right there, in through the needle, and then it just ties off. And every time the scoops hay and it shoves it back, this bell keeps coming out just little by little at every stroke of the plunger, which is spinning this right here. And once it hits this notch right here, that trips your nodders. And in the blink of an eye, it's phenomenal how fast this thing will tie a knot. It trips it. All this, like these right here, they completely spin around. The needles punch up, put string to the nodders. The nodders ties the string, cuts it. The needles fall back down, or pull back down. And then, not even a blink of an eye, that happens. And then the plunger's making another stroke. And this is what I was talking about in a previous video, which is a quarter turn bell chute. Pretty much once the bell gets all the way out here and it's free of the chamber, it just drops on its side, right like that. Which is meant for running one of these bell wagons like I got right here. If, if you were just pulling, like it's got a hitch right here, if you are just pulling a hay wagon behind you, stacking it by hand, you would have just a flat piece of metal going up at an angle for a ramp to feed hay to the person stacking it. But well, this is a quarter turn, so it just drops it right on the side for one of these bell wagons to pick up. But it's, it's unreal how heavy this wheel is on the side of this. I don't 
think it says how much it weighs. But trust me, it's heavy. I remember as a kid bellowing, hey, every time it, we were about to put it up, we were done. I'd always, when this is spinning, put my finger like this, and you, it's almost like a fine powder that just collects air in. Which is hay dust from this thing punching bells, but just accumulates in that wheel. I'm gonna get around the other side and show you the pickup more. Alrighty, here's the pickup. Like I said, that crank right there, you turn it down until this pickup's just barely touching the ground so it picks the wind roll up, but not a bunch of sticks and dirt and crap. And then as this pick running a wind roll in this, it augers it over the stuff or fork. You see the the plunger's almost in the complete forward position. As soon as that plunger goes back, then the stuff or fork goes and it feeds hay right into where that you see that plunger is closing the hole up right now. It'll take the hay this auger's feeding. They call it stuff or fork for a reason. It stuffs it in the bell chamber, then that that goes. And as it forms a square, it's got knives on the edge of the plunger that cuts it into the square shape. Here's where your balls of twine go. This thing is let's say not this one here, but this one here's probably got enough twine to I don't know, do 50, 60 bills. I'm just assuming. But you take this and you just run it through these things on the lid here. Through the holes on the end, down around those where the needles are at there, those bars, which is what punches the needle up through the hay. Run it through those eyes, through the eye of the needle when you tie it off. So whenever the thing pu punches up, the needle punches through the hay, the string's tied off. So it's not just pulling hay directly out of the box here. Since the other end's tied off, it's got to come from somewhere. The 328. <laughs> and this biller's got a bell counter that goes on it, but I never have took the time to figure out how to get it to go on there because I always just run the tractor and every time, every time you hear this tie knot, you know a bell came out and you just keep clicking it and the counter at the end of bell and hay tells me how many I got. There, there's a rock I used to put behind the wheel for swinging the tongue out. I think that about wraps it up. I don't think there's anything else to say about it really. Mm, I don't think that pretty well covers it. Hold on, there might be one more thing to say about it. If I can get over there. Daisy, what are you doing back there? It does have this neat little toolbox made into it. For holding your tools and stuff. Probably got shear pins here and sandpaper for sanding those knives off because they get moisture on them and rust. There's a cap off of a tube of grease. Got some wrenches for the knotters. There's a bearing. And you can tell that's nuts. But it's absolutely amazing how machinery works. You know what? I'm going to set this camera up somewhere and I'm going to spin this wheel and you all can see that plunger going back to the home position. Kind of have a basic idea of how exactly it works. Spun that you should have seen that thing go in and out at least once or twice. 
or at least move almost one time. And as I said before, you can never grease yourself for this thing. It's got a lot of grease fittings, and you cannot forget to grease them. Like there's one right here. It's something my uncle always taught me. You always wipe the head of the grease circle off because if not, whatever dust is on that little that little ball right there that goes in to let the grease in, you'll shove it right into that thing and wear out your stuff. And also, there's chains right here, so you can pick that up or let it down and then adjust how what angle you're at.